Grab yourself a Milky Way, cause the USS Enterprise is about to explore the Milky Way. As we explore one of the greatest sci-fi series of all time. Airing from 1987 to 1994, Star Trek The Next Generation was the third iteration of a Star Trek TV show. When in the 1980s, Gene Roddenberry, who was behind the original series, cartoon, and subsequent films, was tasked with creating yet another installment, so he decided to set it one century after the previous adventures. And this great sci-fi show includes many social and political themes, and it was actually released in a first-run syndication style, which is pretty interesting. While the show started out kind of slow, with season one being much less perfected, it certainly became something special, claiming an astounding 19 Emmy Awards and further pushing the Star Trek brand towards even more iterations for years to come. I'm your Lieutenant Commander Nostalgic Nick, and today we're heading back to the Enterprise to see what the cast of Star Trek The Next Generation is up to today. But before we blast off, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, it really helps. And subscribe to the channel so you never miss a cast rewind like this. Patrick Stewart Captain Picard is the commanding officer of the Enterprise, the champion of this show. He's just superb, as always. Patrick Stewart adds such depth to this character, beautifully portraying a range of far-out episodes. From Picard aging 30 years, to being captured and tortured in Season 6's Chain of Command, this guy puts on a clinic. <laughs> With his bold green eyes and a wonderful deadpan comic delivery, Stewart's career has spanned all mediums, beginning on the stage and then conquering TV and film. After his monumental Star Trek success, he championed more projects like becoming Professor Charles Xavier, aka Professor X in the X-Men films. A personal favorite film of mine is 1997's Mel Gibson-led Conspiracy Theory. But between his Professor X and Captain Picard, he is constantly busy portraying one of these two guiding forces. And when he's not, or maybe just in the trailer during takes, Patrick has enjoyed an extensive voice acting career too. From The Prince of Egypt, to Jimmy Neutron, Boy Genius, Chicken Little, and much more. Just doing my duty. <laughs> what? Patrick Stewart has been nominated for an Olivier, Tony, Emmy, Saturn, and Golden Globe Award. And in 1994, he was knighted by the late Queen Elizabeth II for his services to the performing arts. Today, this self-confessed Reba McIntyre fan is 82 years old. And I have heard great things about his Star Trek Picard series, but I don't have Paramount Plus, so let me know in the comments if I need to get it. Brent Spiner Lieutenant Commander Data is an android and second officer, the ever-present and calculating voice of logic. And Spiner is the other cast member who at times can touch Patrick Stewart's masterclass of acting. His robotic nature is almost laughable at times, but in a good way, especially when you realize all he wants is peaceful interspecies relations, further packing this show with important societal relevance. Aside from Data, Brent Spiner is probably best recognized for his Independence Day role, playing the eccentric doctor who ultimately gets really close and personal with the aliens. Much closer than Data would have suggested. Spiner is currently a regular on the Star Trek Picard series and has also lent his voice for the Joker podcast and Batman the Audio Adventures. In 2021, Spiner released his own book, Fan Fiction, a Mem Noir Inspired by True Events, which is pretty cool. It's a mixture of memoir and a fictitious noir detective story. Today, Spiner is 73 years old, and he has stayed very close with his Star Trek family, serving as a groomsman at Marina Sirtis' wedding, and as the best man at Patrick Stewart's ceremony too. Or should I say, best android. Jonathan Frakes. What's your name? Tell me you love jazz. Commander William Riker is the ship's first officer, as well as first ladies man and lover of jazz. Jonathan Frakes moved to New York City in 1975 to make it big, and struggled as a waiter and a furniture mover, where he injured his back. 
That's when he headed to the doctors. No, not to check on his back, but to star in that soap opera for a year as a Vietnam veteran. It certainly was his big break and he completed 90 episodes. Next came the big move to LA where he landed guest appearances on Charlie's Angels, Fantasy Island, and two episodes of The Waltons as Ashley Longworth Jr. But Star Trek was certainly career-defining. In more ways than one, discovering a gift for directing, helming eight episodes, the most of any cast member with Patrick Stewart directing five. And Frakes was invited to direct more spin-offs, Deep Space Nine and Star Trek Voyager. He's really quite talented. Heck, he directed season 5's Cause and Effect, which is generally believed to be one of the best episodes of the entire series. It guest stars Kelsey Grammer during the height of his cheer success. Jonathan got the nickname Two Takes Frakes for his efficient filming style on the set of Star Trek First Contact. Today, he is 70 years old and he last directed four episodes of Picard, as he reprised Riker three times on the show too. Acting Captain Will Riker in command of the USS Zheng He. And since 1988, he has been married to General Hospital mainstay and soap opera extraordinaire Jeannie Francis. The couple has two children together. LeVar Burton. Lieutenant Geordi LaForge is the vessel's chief engineer beginning in season two, fixing all the issues that arise despite being blind as he is aided with a sightseeing visor. LeVar Burton's breakout role was a powerful performance as young Kunta Kinte in the HBO miniseries Roots. But even more than that, and even more than LaForge, Burton is best known as the kind and welcoming host of Reading Rainbow. He was so well known because of these two projects that when Star Trek was about to take off, many American news outlets falsely claimed that LeVar was the next Shatner. But don't worry Americans, you'll learn to love Patrick Stewart too. You're adorable. LeVar has also portrayed Martin Luther King Jr. in the 2001 film Ali and Tommy Price in Steve McQueen's The Hunter, earning him the NAACP Image Award for Outstanding Actor. Along with acting and directing, LeVar is an accomplished author, having written two novels and a number of children's books, hence the Reading Rainbow Dynasty. Hey, Troy. I'm LeVar Burton. Today, LeVar is 65 years old and was recently in the running to replace Alex Trebek on Jeopardy. Burton's next project is joining the star's show Blind Spotting for season two. LeVar has been married to makeup artist Stephanie Cozart Burton since 1992. The couple have one daughter together and they live in Sherman Oaks, California. But you don't have to take my word for it. Marina Sirtis. Lieutenant Commander Deanna Troy is the half-human, half-betazoid ship counselor, and she has a relationship with First Officer Riker. Sirtis began acting in her native United Kingdom in the 1970s, moving to LA in 1986. But after months of rejection, she was on the precipice of abandoning all hope when Star Trek changed everything. And she's very much at it today, with a long voice acting career to pair with loads of Star Trek appearances, combining the two for Star Trek Lower Decks in 2020. Today, Marina is 67 years old. We last saw her in two episodes of Picard, as well as the North London social club flick The Bazonians in 2021. In 1992, Sirtis married rock guitarist Michael Lamper, but sadly, he passed away in his sleep in 2019, which contributed to a 2021 move back to London for more BBC work. Michael Dorn. Sir, I protest, I am not a merry man. Lieutenant Worf is an orphaned Klingon raised by humans, becoming the first Klingon to serve in Starfleet, at times having to fight his natural Klingon tendencies, while working with humans and Starfleet standards. And he is a legendary character, completing more episode appearances than any other actor in the franchise's history. His Worf was so popular that in 1995, he was added to the fourth TV series, Star Trek Deep Space Nine. It was an effort to boost ratings and they gave him a romantic arc that ended in tragedy in season six of Deep Space. Aside from this iconic character, you may remember him as Officer Jebediah Turner on the hit motorcycle cop show, Chips. Dorn is also an extremely talented voice actor from Gargoyles to Cow and Chicken and much more. 
Today, Michael is 69 years old, and the last time we saw him on a TV show not in space was from 2011 to 2015 as Dr. Carter Burke on the show Castle. When he's not acting, check the skies. No, I'm not joking. Dorn is an accomplished pilot and the owner of several aircraft, even flying with the Blue Angels and the Air Force Precision Flight Team. Wow, this is one talented Klingon. Gates, McFadden, and Will Wheaton. Dr. Beverly Crusher is the Enterprise's chief medical officer, a moral and inquisitive doctor who is joined by her son, Wesley Crusher, played by standby Mies Will Wheaton. He departs during season four besides a few guest starring spots, but Wheaton and LeVar Burton were the only two admitted Trekkies when they joined the cast. Before McFadden's acting career took off, she moved to Paris to study mime and clowning, and while there, she met Patrick Stewart. Little did either of them know that they would share the screen before too long. In addition to Star Trek, McFadden has appeared in The Hunt for Red October and the TV show The Practice. She has also been the choreographer for several films, including The Muppets Take Manhattan and The Cosby Show. Today at 73 years old, McFadden is working on a project called Hexen Geddon and is slated to reprise her Star Trek role in season three of Picard. Star Trek really is one big family, as Brent Spiner is the godfather of Gates' son, her actual son, not Will Wheaton. Shut up, Wesley. But Wheaton is still acting today, most prominently playing himself in 17 episodes of The Big Bang Theory. But his role in Rob Reiner's Stand By Me will always be my personal favorite. Besides acting, he has his own blog and has published many books and short stories. Today, Will is 50 years old and lives in Arcadia, California with his wife Anne and her two sons. All right, our space voyage is coming to a close. Although Captain Kirk and Spock gave birth to the Star Trek universe, this cast helped bring old fans and new fans together, all moving to the next generation, pun intended. So now it's your turn. I want to know what was the first Star Trek adventure that had you hooked? Is Next Generation the best Star Trek show of all time? Which standalone film is your personal favorite? And what are your thoughts on the newest iterations, both film and series? I know, a lot of pressing questions, so get in the comments and tell me your thoughts. And if you enjoyed our deep dive, please give it a thumbs up, it really helps. Subscribe to the channel so you never miss a memory. But from all of us here at Do You Remember, we want to thank you for watching.